Hello. I, yeah. Hello? Can you hear me, Sarah? Yes. Nice to hear you. Yes. 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 Uh, today I'm very happy to welcome Sarah Hensi, a great artist who's been living in different countries and different culture, you know, for the last, uh, I don't know how many years. How are you, Sarah? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be healthy in Los Angeles. Um, yeah, I'm happy to reach out to people through you and you know, I'm enjoying California. Yes, uh, you remember we did an interview on our website uh, about your work early, uh, your birth in Australia, mm -hmm. then uh, your parents moved to Turkey. Yes. And you worked between Turkey, Europe and California in the United States, yes. correct? Yes, I so, was born and raised in Australia, um, and then I went to Turkey, and um, I became, a, um, I was a Miss Turkey, and then I had many TV shows there, and then I had several TV shows in London, Germany, Holland, um, Bulgaria, I shot a few films, and then LA, California. Yes. So. I want to ask you first, um, because you worked in the Turkish industry between television and uh, cinema. Mm -hmm. And uh, why do you think the Turkish, especially the Turkish drama recently, when they are dubbed, you know, like uh, in Arabic we say Harim Sultan, uh -huh. which is the, uh, the queens of the Sultan. Yes. My wife liked to watch it uh, in Spanish. Uh -huh. And in Egypt, everybody was watching it in, yeah. uh, in nice Arabic. Show. Yeah. Uh, yes, but what do you think uh, Turkish soaps are very accessible worldwide like that? Um, I think the quality of production is very high mm -hmm. and there's a lot of output. I mean, you know, I, um, I mean, just to give an example, I shot a film in uh, Bulgaria and uh, one day I had offset and the two main leads came back to the hotel, we were having dinner with all the cast and crew, and they were like, oh, we're so exhausted, we're so exhausted. And I said, why, what did you do? And they're like, we shot six pages today. I burst out laughing, they're like, what are you laughing at? I, I said, okay, let me give you a little math. <laughs> Turkish TV shows are about 100 pages, sometimes 120 a week, and we shoot them in six days. So that's about 20 pages a day, and um, and it takes you an hour to get to set, an hour to get back. And you're working for 18 hours a day. You're driving for two. You sleep about four hours. Then you get up and you do it the next day all over again. And you do that for nine months. See, the American American TV shows are about 40 pages, you know, if that. Um, and they shoot them over 10 days. <laughs> so, and their TV season is usually about 10 episodes. You know, like a Netflix show is what 10 episodes uh, yes TV shows. yes before be, before it used to be 13 episodes 13, yeah and uh, i think right now it's more compressed i recently yeah. watch uh, loki on disney plus uh -huh. i liked it very much it was uh -huh. only very uh, uh, only seven episodes but myself there because i like cinema more uh, mm -hmm. I like concentrated drama, you know, not yes. to go on and on for many seasons, yeah. you know. Oh, the Turkish but, TV shows go on and on. <laughs> I mean, yes. nine months. So you're shooting yes. for nine months and you're shooting 20 pages a day. And they don't shoot with sound. So six days a week you shoot and on the seventh day you go in to do your sound. So it's yes. a lot of work, you know. It's like shooting a feature film every week. Um, and no other country has that much output. Uh, no, no. After the U.S., has the greatest output right now in the world. Yes. Huge, you know. I mean, I think they've kind of taken over the Mexican telenovelas of the day. Yes. Um, I remember back when I worked in uh, Turkish TV, it was a lot more soapy, you know, there were a lot very soap opera-ish, 
you know, um, but the stories are getting better. I'm seeing a lot of great TV shows on Netflix. I watched Ethos. Um, I watched another Turkish actress, uh, Burcu Biricik, um, oh, Fatma TV show. And uh, the stories were phenomenal. Um, the acting was phenomenal. It wasn't, you know, soap opera-ish. So, um, yeah, there's... Um, there's it there's a lot to offer you know if you want melodramatic soaps there's melodramatic soaps if you want to do um you know um um dramas there's drama there's action there's you know there's a lot of love stories <laughs> you know they're big on the love stories so yeah um, yeah, I, I I will tell you something about Egypt and Turkey. You know, Egypt and Turkey they share the common. They were part of the Ottoman Empire. Maybe course. you studied uh, yes. this in history. The Ottoman history. And, yes, and um, when uh, Egypt uh, in 1967, you know, uh, lost the war with Israel, many Egyptian actors went to Turkey and did a lot of films because yes. the production there was very prosperous yes. and uh, some of these films we couldn't have the opportunity to watch it because they were in Turkey and the Egyptian were dubbed, you know? Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, during the 70s, uh, you know, uh, I didn't know that, but I know, I know it when I started to work. You know, uh, there was uh, in the 70s and the 80s during Atatürk, uh, uh, rule. Uh, there was a very uh, a lot, uh, you know, cinema production was very huge in Turkey. And they used to shoot films in 8 millimeter and 16 millimeters. Yes. And it was Atatürk called. Atatürk passed away earlier. Atatürk passed away in 1945, I want to say. Because yes. He didn't see World War II. Um, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, these cinemas, they used to call it in Turkey, Yeshil Kam. Yeshil Kam, yes. Yeshil Kam still exists. It's a, it's a part, it's, still. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a region in Beolo, and it still uh, yes. exists. I've, I've spent some time there, yeah. I visited. Yes, you know, and uh, yeah, but, um, uh, when I was once, I think, in Carlo Viveri Festival, and they uh -huh. did a, a very nice documentary on the herb history of uh -huh. Turkish cinema, very informative, uh -huh. and they, uh, uh, some of the directors are still alive, including yeah. some of the actors, many yeah. stars, there was the equivalent of uh, Marlene Monroe and Brigitte Bardot, an actress yeah. very famous uh, called Banu Alkan, maybe Banu you... Alkan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she called herself. Yes, her. and she used to do a lot of films. Yeah. Um, and uh, 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 they used to do a lot of action films imitating American films. Like there was yeah. a Turkish Superman, Turkish Captain America. Huh? And they used to put uh, music from, you know, the vinyl uh, uh, music, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you are watching the films and you hear the score of, uh, John Williams, Joe's, or uh, Star Wars, Star Wars, or Superman, yes, yes. Uh -huh. and um, you know, and it's it, it was the same music in in all the films, you know, and of course yeah. James Bond heavily used, you know, the original yeah. uh, James yeah. Bond with uh, John uh, Sean Connery. But yeah. what I um, later on, you know, a lot of uh, Turkish filmmakers, you know, they they started to do very. Uh, uh, very good films, and they were awarded in Cannes Festival, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the new generation, uh, yeah. of course, very. Uh, I, I, I want yeah. to ask you: When you used to do soap operas, did you uh, learn your lines by heart, or did you use cue cards? I never used cue cards. Actually, in Turkish cue, uh, Turkish uh, soap operas, they don't have cue cards, but you have, um, oh, what's a word for it? There's a word for it. They have it in theater where somebody shouts a line out at you because they don't shoot with sound. So or you, they do uh, uh, microphones. Like no, no, it's not microphone, there's somebody behind the camera shouting the line out to you, and then you just repeat it. But I never uh -huh. used that because I came from the theater. So we learn lines. Yes. 
I yes, never but, like that because it, it takes yes. you out of the yeah it's of just the character. Weird. Yeah, I, yes. I, I never liked it. I know. Yeah. Yes, but but tell me. Um, just when you're shooting twenty pages a day, you can't always memorize them. But I, I always memorize. I, I don't like using a. Um, uh, in Turkish, it's called souffle. Souffle. Um, souffle. There's term, yeah, there's a term for it in English as well. I can't remember it. They had it in the theater back in the day, with an actor was on stage and would forget a line. They would have somebody, you know, just gently shout it out from the wings. Uh, obviously not, yes. loud, not for anybody else to hear, mm -hmm. um, but um, oh, I forget the term for it. But anyway, yeah, no, I, I never, I never used that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I came from the theater, you know. Yes. <laughs> but but uh, tell me, why uh, did you decide to to change your name? Didem Erol is your birth name in the uh, in the passport in the Turkish passport. Um, so I have an English name, a Turkish name. And yes. uh, neither of them is Sarah Hennessy. I, my legal name, I have an English name. Um, but um, it's not Sarah. Sarah got given later to me in life through a spiritual teacher. And um, originally, I just wanted to use it as a stage name. But it, it, it became very lucky for me. And I had somebody look at my astrological chart. And they told me why the name I was using would be very unlucky for me. And they said, you will lose your health and your wealth if you keep this name. And I did. So then I yes. came back. I was like, okay, this name is a bad, negative energy for me. I don't want it. <laughs> Give me another one. And they did. So, uh, and um, yeah, and Sarah's been very lucky for me. So I, I kept it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, but, it wasn't, uh, I didn't change my name because I thought it was fashionable or whatever. I mean, a lot of people actually in America really like my Turkish name. Unfortunately, uh -huh. it's quite hard to pronounce for Americans because it's written D I D E M, and D I D E M yes. in English is pronounced didem. So they say yes. didem or didem, or you know, they can't pronounce it in uh -huh. didem. It's a lot softer. D and it means yes. you're precious like my eyes. It has a very beautiful meaning. But I yes. have to explain to people how to pronounce it, and it's just uh -huh. it's too much work. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep my stage name. Yes, but uh, tell me, it, it uh, usually Sarah is written S A R H. You know why? Why this has a different spelling? <laughs> I was actually given Sarah with an A. <laughs> uh, yes, but it didn't work with my birth chart, so I had to change the spelling as well. It's quite a long explanation, <laughs> but um, but I'm like, well, people don't say Sarah anyway; they say Sarah. So I'm like, if it's with an E, it's still Sarah. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I, I just spelled it differently. But actually, I did find out. So Sarah, um, because I studied Kabbalah for a long time, and Sarah yes. was the wife of Abraham. Uh, yes, of course. He's in the Quran, he's in the Bible, he's in the, you know, he's in the Torah, and um, and she was she was a very powerful woman. She was it means princess in Hebrew. Uh, yes. She was, uh, she was almost a prophet in her own right. Um, and I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to call myself Sarah with an E. And then I was told by somebody um, that Sarah with an E also exists. And she was the granddaughter of Isaac. And of um, she was one of the very few women who are mentioned in the Torah. So we know she was a powerful woman. And mm -hmm. she, um, so the story was that Isaac was in a depression because Joseph was <coughs> thrown in a... Uh, given given to slavery uh, by his brothers, and but he thought his son was dead. Isaac was in a depression for uh, 13 or 30, I forget the exact number, years. And, um, and Sarah, with an E, his granddaughter, found out that he was alive. And she thought, well, if I go and tell my grandfather he's going to have a heart attack, you know, he's been so depressed, his son was... He thought his son was dead, you know, after 30 years, if you come and tell him, you know, your son's not dead, you know, he's an old man at this point. So she came into his tent and she played the harp and she sang him a song. And in the song, she said, your son is in so it was a very soft way. And he was so overcome with joy, he blessed her with, uh, um, with redemption. And she was one of the very few people who are mentioned in the Torah who actually didn't die, who went up directly. 
So that's of the course. story of my name. So Sarah with an E does exist. <laughs> yes, the story is uh, similar in the Bible and the Quran. And yes. by the way, my wife's sons are called Abraham and Isaac. So wow. Yes, That's, my, that is very powerful. There you yes. go. <laughs> yes, but uh, tell me right now, um, you've been successful in Turkey. Mm -hmm. What drove you to, of course, uh, I consider Turkey as part of Europe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. what drove you to, to try to venture into European cinema and then yeah. American cinema? Because, of course, this is a channel, challenge for some actors. Yes. But for yourself, uh, I think you speak many languages. It was yes. no problem. Yes. Tell me about this uh, passages in your life. <laughs> so when I first told everybody in Turkey I was going to move to America, they thought I was crazy. Actually, a lot of yes. my American friends are like, you know, you're a big star in your country. You're treated like a princess. Mm -hmm. You know, why did you come to America? You know, where, where nobody knows your name. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of people did think I was crazy, but... Uh, yeah, and they, they were like, oh, it's impossible. And I always had a belief that the word impossible does not really exist in my dictionary. So um, I was like, huh, that's silly. I can do anything I put my mind to. Um, and I always wanted to make international films. You know, I think because I was born and raised in Australia and Australia is a very... They empower people. They tell you, you can do anything. You can do anything you set your mind to. That's the education I grew up with. In Turkey, they say everything is impossible. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to that belief. So, um, I wanted to make international movies, and I thought, well, you know, I, um, I'm as big as I'm going to get in Turkey, and I'm not going to really go anywhere from here. And things, were, and, and by the way, but things were different ten years ago. See, a lot of the Turkish TV shows are being sold all over the world now. And so they have an international following. But back in my mm -hmm. day, it wasn't so. So if I had stayed in Turkey and had, you know, and continued making TV shows there, I probably would have had 5 million followers instead of 50,000. I have. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yes. it was different because, you know, they weren't sold all over the world. Um, but um, again, you know, I think I, I made uh, two films in Bulgaria back to back for for you know the, the hollywood films and one was with morgan freeman and john cusack with an oscar winning you know huge director bruce Beresford. and right after that i did another one for nbc for the sci-fi channel you know with some known names and i thought you know well off the back of those you know maybe i can gain some kind of momentum or traction and um, and try my luck in, in LA and in an international market. And also one of my biggest, obviously, saving graces was that English was my first language. Um, my Turkish is not as good as my English. <laughs> um, so I thought, well, you know, if I could make it in Turkey and I didn't even know the language when I first went at 19 years old, I can, I can definitely make it in America. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, and... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, was easy for you to find an agent in the States and find new roles? Um, yeah, agents I found easy because I had a very solid reel. See, most mm -hmm. American actors, they start off, you know, doing student films, doing, you know, they have, you know, I mean, I would sit in an audition with people who had two, three jobs on their resume. I had 30, you know, so I had a lot of experience. I had a very good reel. You know, and I'd done everything also. So I, I had done a sitcom for four years. So I'd done comedy. I'd done action. I kickbox. I do wire work. I do stunts. You know, so I had a wide variety of jobs. So, um, and I had a following. So um, I didn't really have a problem finding um, an agent or getting auditions. I think my one thing was that I kind of made it very early on in my career. So, um, you know, and then I just got offers. I didn't have to audition for anything. So I didn't really know how to audition when I came to, I knew how to act. I knew how to act. I had thousands of hours of TV and film work under my belt. I didn't know how to audition and auditioning and acting are two very different things. I found out, yes. you know, a whole different technique to it. Um, so I had to take lessons and, you know, I had to humble myself and, you know, and, um, you know, and yes and figure it out Great. 
and work yes. work very hard. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Uh, I see it in here in uh, in uh, the Internet Movie Database, you have a, a couple of uh, films coming up. Uh, yes. You have uh, the trouble. It was not released yet, correct? Was no, uh, it Tom wasn't Kismore? released. No, it uh -huh. wasn't released. I don't. I don't have a release date on that one. Uh, uh -huh. The other one you see there is probably the surprise visit. Uh huh. And that's yes. the film I produced. So I'm congratulations. Now... Thank you. Yeah, I. You know, I. I. I'm. A lot of people had a difficult time during the pandemic, and I, you know, and those, but I think the pandemic was kind of good to me, I want to uh -huh. say cautiously, um, because I got to take time out. I got to produce my own film. I was like, I'm tired of waiting around for other people's projects. I'm going to make my own. Um, yes. And um, I, I, yeah, I, you know, I'd worked in production before, but different facets of production where I, um, but I hadn't produced a film from a to z from you know um so it was a very learning experience <laughs> i had to yes. learn all different other you know set of skills you know because as an actor and i'm complete i'm a complete artist like i don't like talking money when you produce a film you have to talk money <laughs> you know yes. you have to uh yeah and uh and negotiate and i was like oh i don't want to do this <laughs> but i had to no. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah. I see this as, um, uh, this was Eric Roberts, great character actor. Yeah, yeah, yes. we were very excited to work with him. And, you know, he's, he's such a great actor. He's been around for a long time. And I mean, God, he's like the, the most working actor in America. Yes. Um, I think he yes. has, yeah, the Guinness World Book of Records. I think there's an Asian actor, one Asian actor has more films than him and he's like the second in the world. Yes, um, yes. And he constantly works, but then you look at his filmography and, you know, he's been nominated for an Oscar. He's been nominated for a Golden Globe. So he's a fantastic yes. actor and um, and just a, a really fun person to work with. So we're really oh, yes. happy and excited to have him on board. And and the role we have him do is, is actually something very different that he's, you know, because mm -hmm. He usually plays, you know, he does a lot of these kind of crime films. Of course, and, you know, he's famous uh, to do. Yeah. Uh, to, yes, and, and I met him briefly. Uh, so yeah, we yeah. have him had a very different role, you know, he's playing a dad. Yes, <laughs> yeah, excellent. Because the film uh, looks like a thriller and people will, will might think that he will play like another criminal or something, or, yes. or a mafioso or something like that. Oh. But uh, tell me, when do you expect the film to be released? Later this year or next year? Maybe? So we're just actually working on the sales and we're signing an agreement this week for the sales and distribution. So we're uh -huh. going to see what their plan for our film is. Um, and I've submitted it to a few film festivals, so we'll see. Yes. I, you know, fingers crossed. I, I think it's 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 a it's a it's a dark film, and it's kind of edgy enough where it might gain some uh, film festival you know attraction. Uh, we tried to make a COVID friendly film, so we had a very limited cast and crew because we didn't want a lot of people on set. I mean, we shot it at the height of the pandemic. Yes. And, um, but it's it's a solid thriller film. Yeah, I mean, you and know. Did you like your experience as a producer that you would like to do it again? <laughs> yes, I am gonna do it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did like the experience. I mean, um, first of all, like I, um, we shot over two weeks so it was very exhausting and again we didn't have a huge crew because we didn't want a lot of people so there was a lot of heavy lifting to do i was really exhausted and there was a very physical element to my role uh because i'm literally running for my life the whole film so it was physically yes. very demanding and then obviously i'm in the whole film so i have a lot of dialogue so i have a lot of dialogue it's very physical so it's, it's i'm physically and mentally exhausted and then at the end of the day where all the actors are going home to relax i have to work on the production side of things as well of and, and um and to I prepare for the following day i think the producer and the director work all the time for the movie and the actors go home of course yes 
So I would like to do it over more time if I have, you know, the next one. I would like to stretch it a bit more and probably have more people on deck, you know, um, so I don't have to do so much heavy lifting um, and, you know, and, and take my time with it. I mean, this was really, you know, we, we, had, we wanted to get out of uh, – we shot it in Virginia and we wanted everybody home – uh, before um, the election started, and we literally finished the day before elections. We didn't want to be on the road because we thought, we did, you know, people didn't want to be on, on the road because obviously it was a stressful election in America. And um, we, thought that we thought there might be some, you know, events or some, you know, some ugliness, which eventually did happen. I mean, later in January, uh, unfortunately, but, um, you know, we wanted to remain cautious. So, um, we, we were in a, you know, time crunch to get everybody done and wrap and the film wrapped, uh, by, I think it was November three, I think the elections were November 4th. So we had to wrap by November 2nd. So everybody could go home November 3rd because nobody wanted to be on the road at that time. So, um, um, would I do it again? Absolutely. Yes. Because, um, again, I think of the two week shooting schedule, I was on set every day as an actor. And then I think there were only two, two days where I was off and I went on set as a producer and I really got to enjoy my set. And I remember the first day I walked on set and I saw everybody working and we had a fantastic crew. I mean, from the, from the camera to the art direction to everybody. And they were all working so hard because again, we didn't have a crew of 50 people um, and they all worked so hard to make it happen. And um, I walked on set and I looked around me and I was, I was very, very humbled it was very humbling. I mean, I, I was proud. I was proud. I was like, oh, wow. I, like, you know, I, I did this. <laughs> I was I was almost in, in disbelief almost. I was like, I really pulled it off because there were some times when we were, when we were in pre-production and I really, I was so stressed I could cry because I thought I have really bitten off more than I can chew because if you're making a film in, in LA or New York or even Atlanta, there's a lot of crew and there's a lot of people you can find. And I mean, in, in LA, I can find 5,000 makeup artists, not so much in Virginia, you know? So there were a couple of times where I thought, oh God, I'm not going to be able to find the people I need. And I don't want to fly them in from LA because obviously that's going to increase my costs. So I was, I was very stressed going in. And then the first day I walked on set and everything just came together magically. I, I really think I was blessed or I had some divine, <laughs> divine interference. <laughs> I was helped <laughs> by some angels looking out for me. <laughs> I don't know what, but it came together and I walked onto set and I went, I, I, I was, I was proud, but not like, Oh, you know, look at me. I did this. I was like, wow, I really managed to pull it off. And then I was very deeply humbled. I was like, wow, all these people came together for, you know, our film and they're working so hard. And I'm like, I'm really, I'm, I'm really lucky and I'm really blessed to be surrounded by so many people with, who are so amazingly talented. I was like, oh, yeah. So I rambled. Yes, <laughs> yes but um, uh, right now the editing of the film is finished. Oh yeah, yeah, no, the film is completely finished. Cool. Yeah. But uh, I want to ask you, as a producer, did you give the director a hard time editing the film? Uh, <laughs> I didn't so much. I think we had some other producers on board and they were a little bit, well, I want this scene, I don't want this scene. And I was like, I don't think I was so hard. Um, you know, there, I think there was only one scene of my own that I didn't like as much. And I was like, ah, can we do not like, and it was just, it was just really close on my face. It was like the camera was like right here. And it was a scene where I was, I was crying. It was emotional. And I felt like, can, can we do, can we choose another one where the camera's a little bit? <laughs> Cause my face is all messed up. And I think it was, <laughs> you know, I was crying. I was bloody. I was like, man. So, yeah, I don't think I really gave my, my director a hard time. Um, I think uh, we, we had another, another producer on board, and I think he was a little bit more, <laughs> I wanted this edited and that edited, and he was a little bit more, 
<laughs> no, I, I, I wasn't that difficult. I like to think. But uh, after that experience and all your experience, theater, cinema, television worldwide, uh, did you have the thought of directing yourself? Ooh, directing is another ball game, I find. I mean, I think I... I I think I would ha I would find it easy to talk to and direct actors. I think I'd be good at that because I can kind of see how I, I, I understand how an actor's mind works. So I think I'd be good in getting different performances out of them because I'm, I'm good at communicating in that way. But there's the technical aspect of directing and I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't feel as confident with myself in that aspect I mean yeah you, you have a director of photography and they light it for you and they you know and but you know I don't know I don't feel as confident with the technical aspect I mean maybe over time who knows you know maybe when I have a little bit more experience producing I might I might I don't know Maybe maybe I maybe I direct a short film first and see how I. <laughs> yes, this is what I was about to tell you. I yeah. mean, you can start by if you like a short script, and I know many actors actors who started like that. Yeah. But I remember uh, when you said about uh, the technical stuff and the director of photography. I uh, a, lot, a lot of years ago I was watching the making of uh, the movie Hoffa. It starred uh -huh. uh, Jack Nicholson, and it was directed and co-starred by uh, Danny DeVito. And in the making of the movie, Danny DeVito was behind the camera. He was shooting a scene in the director, so he was not uh, in character. And he was saying to the camera, uh, okay, this is the camera. We are working uh, with it right now. And I don't know what the hell uh, is these buttons. <laughs> so... <laughs> That would be me. <laughs> I'd be like, ah, it's a camera, it's shoot. But yeah. Uh, um, yes, yes, yes. And you can give direction in Turkish as well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could do that, definitely. I could do that, uh, yeah. Uh, Sarah, I want to thank you very much for this uh, interview. Uh, and I, I was very happy uh, to hear the news about uh, the new film, the surprise visit uh, starring you and Eric Roberts, and I see a lot of good talents in it. Yeah. And I wish it can make a good festival uh, circle before, and and don't forget to invite us, me and my wife, uh, to the premiere. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> amen. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yes, you. and if you want to make a, a premiere with Eric Roberts here in Ecuador, you are mo most welcome. <laughs> Oh, I would love that, but um, yeah, I don't know about travel right now. I mean, <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm, yeah, I mean, when we went to our set in Virginia, we actually uh, got a uh, an RV and we drove there. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, so yes. So I'm still not sure, but I would love to see Ecuador and I'd love to see you and come to your film festival. That would be awesome. Yes, uh, we have a festival uh, as well uh, uh, in Egypt. We uh, there is a new city called uh -huh. New Alamein. Uh, new Alamein. It it uh -huh. is uh, on the Mediterranean, and next year uh, it will uh, have a new film festival starting, first edition. You know, and Al Alamein. If you browse it over the internet, it it uh -huh. looks like a metropolis. It's like Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Uh, Wow. Doha, you know, very beautiful city on the, and right now, uh, oh, I'd love yeah. To see yeah. Egypt anyways. I mean, yes, I, I, I think you would Africa. love, and I think, I I'm think, okay. uh, I, I invited a lot of Turkish artists to Alexandria Festival. It's a Mediterranean <laughs> country festival, uh, you know, and you know, Mediterranean people, they have their own culture and a lot of common stuff, you know, so oh, I'm very lucky. A lot of people from Croatia, from Bosnia, yeah. Denis Stanovic, who won the Oscar for No Man's Land, I invited him. Uh -huh. And uh, you would love Egypt, I'm sure. I'd love to. I mean, you have such an amazing history. Yeah. And I yes, yes. The pyramids and it's yes. phenomenal. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, uh, we look forward to, to do that. And we'd Thank like you. to invite you with one of your films, oh, you know. Okay. And maybe you like to shoot something in Egypt. Who knows? love to that's so exciting <laughs> yeah I Thanks, love Sarah. 
archaeology kind of, of course, Indiana of Jones kinds of, of course, actors. Of and, yeah. You would love Egypt. My wife loves Egypt uh, a lot. Uh, and we've been in all the cities as one, Luxor, uh -huh. uh, Alexandria. Uh, each city has its own festival. So we're going to learn some work and some pleasure as well and uh -huh. tourism. Oh, sounds fantastic. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay, Sarah, I want to thank you very much for this live. And uh, also, thank before you. we uh, close the, um, the live, uh, we would like to send our best wishes to Turkey for yeah. the challenges uh, they have having right now regarding the fire. And I hope everything will be okay. Uh, the world needs to be a better place right now, especially after the COVID, and people should come together more. Oh, I hear you, Sheriff. I, amen. Amen. I mean, <laughs> it's sad to see people and nature and animals suffer. And I, 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 I'm just terribly saddened about it. Um, of course. Yeah. yeah yes, I think let's we're uh, to something about climate you know change of course we must be uh, more aware about the climate and uh, to protect the na nature worldwide yeah thank you sarah thank you very thank much you, sir. Thank <laughs> you. yeah yeah looking forward to hearing your news you know and the release likewise of the likewise yeah, take care. bye 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 bye, bye.